name is John Flett. I'm a pediatrician who focuses on ADHD and the associated problems. And as a medical doctor, I deal with everything. I've got to understand everything about a child and a family. I've got to get inside their heads. I've got to be able to understand the comorbidities. There's anxiety, mood problems, learning problems, coordination problems. And I prescribe medicine. And I prescribe an enormous amount of medication. And it's a skill I've developed over 24 years focusing on ADHD. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to help you understand something about the medication and what it's going to do. One of the things that really worries parents, they worry about losing the child's personality. And it's a big worry. Thinking about putting your child on a medication is a big step. And there's so much hype. There's so much kind of controversy. There's a stigma. Let's face it. Even in 2024, there's still a stigma related to the medication. So it's because you can't see the problem. ADHD kids look normal. They're not freaks. They don't look weird. It's a problem that's invisible, but it has an enormous impact. And there's nothing that comes even close to the treatment with medication. There are lots of other things that we can talk to and talk about it at some other point. But the medication is the foundation. So I'm going to talk about the medication and does it impact the personality? So I'm going to give you an overview. And I'm going to say that, yes, it can. But if it's in the right hands, it's prescribed carefully, you can minimize that risk. It really depends on the skill of the person who is prescribing that medicine and the experience and the information. You know, I say to my parents, I'm not telepathic. I don't have a crystal ball. It's a two-way, it's a three-way, it's a four-way communication between myself, between parents, between the child, between other family members and the school and the teacher. So that medicine, particularly in that first month, when you start ADHD medication, we don't have a metric to know whether that child is going to respond to that class of medicine. Basically, we've got three lanes to follow. There are stimulants, which are divided into two groups, called methylphenidate and amphetamines. And if you are younger, under the age of 12, methylphenidate is a good starting point. After the age of 12, amphetamines. Because... That is kind of the risk profile generally. It's not hard and fast. We certainly do change the medicine, but kind of that's where we start. And then we've got non-stimulants. We've got Stratera, and there's an alternative new product that is uh, available, not in South Africa. But, and then we have those sort of atypical medicines. They can be SSRIs, which are anxiety medicines. There are actually blood pressure medications we can use. But when we start, we make sure that your child isn't at risk heart problems. If your child's got anxiety problems, mood problems, it could really skew things. So when we start a medication, you've got to think, you know, is that medicine going to impact my child's personality? And how do we go about minimizing that risk? And that's what I want to talk to you about. So it's a hot topic. And, you know, it often stops a lot of parents continuing with medication because they don't like what they see. I start off by warning parents and saying, you know, you've got to put your seatbelt on for that first week or two. It's unlikely to cause a problem weeks and months later. Young children don't always have that autonomy. They're not autonomous. They don't understand their feelings and what's going on. 
But when children reach that latter part of senior primary into high school, adolescence, it kind of, adolescence kind of does something. It helps you become a lot more self-aware. So recently I've had somebody who has been started on the medicine over six, seven months ago. And the child who's at high school is very smart, has a lot of internal understanding of themselves. And they've not really thought that the medicine really helps. And yet everybody is blown away. And at the end of this last year, 2023, the grades were absolutely off the charts improved. And yet, you know, that child says, look, you know, it doesn't make me feel quite like myself. And that's something we've got to listen to, particularly during adolescence, because how can you force a young adult to take a medication that doesn't make them feel great? It's not acceptable. I often say, you know, what side effects are acceptable? Well, in my opinion, no side effects are acceptable. Yes, the appetite's going to be impacted. And there are some other kind of issues related to sleep, but that's not, not, not what we're going to be talking about now. We're talking about that emotional feeling. You know, some kids will say to me, you know, I can't make jokes. I'm not myself. You know, I can't be myself. And everybody else seems to think, well, you know, what's wrong? You know, if a child's hyperactive, disruptive, crazy, well, they can't, you can't expect a child to be treated for ADHD and continuing having all the symptoms of ADHD that makes them the, make them dysfunctional. Parents got to ask yourself the question, what would your child be like without ADHD? So I'm kind of talking about not so much the hyperactive, those external symptoms, the way somebody feels, are they very quiet? A lot of parents will say, you know, my child is very quiet. They're so used to this crazy, hyperactive, impulsive um, child who is all over the show. And then when the child's on meds and they're sitting, focusing, listening, doing things that they wouldn't normally do, more interested in brain work, cognitive work, and that worries a lot of parents because they're so different. What I would say to you as a parent is that we've got to strike middle ground. You can't have a child who's got all those associated, disruptive, dysfunctional symptoms because that's what the ADHD is about. We're trying to treat those issues. That is not disrupting their personality. Are they happy? You know, the short-acting medicines, I must say, have the largest side effects. They like kind of speed humps. They go up and they go down. And often when the dose is going into the system, that inhale, does your child become very quiet, subdued? That can sometimes mean the dose is too high. And then that rebound symptom when that exhale happens. It's like a champagne bottle being uh, sh shaken up and letting the cork out in the afternoon. So it's often when those symptoms happen that's key to really understand, particularly in younger children who don't understand exactly what's happening. They often find that they don't feel any different until you hit adolescence and then you understand yourself. So a lot of parents say, you know, I know of people that have been on Ritalin and I can see their child's different. They don't look like themselves. They look zoned out. They look like a bit like a zombie. And that's not great. You've got to strike that middle ground. You can't have a child who is like an absolute ninja machine and focusing and working and yet has a subdued, withdrawn personality. That is not good. And unfortunately, some children, about 15%, I would say, out of 100, have sometimes an impact on their personality as such. They become a little bit more withdrawn, anxious, a little bit more emotional, overreacting. They might not appreciate or not understand it themselves. They overreact to things that they wouldn't normally react to. 
you've got to give that medicine at least a month to settle. But if it persists, then we've got to look at different longer acting medications. Longer acting medications are always preferable. They have fewer side effects generally, not always, but generally. The barrier to entry to the medicine is being able to swallow that medicine. Long acting Ritalin comes with little beads. You can take the powder out, but put those two little ends immediately back. And get your child to try and swallow that because if they can, then it's easier to give and we've got other forms of the medicine like Concerta, Nucon Oros, which is the clone, Contramol, and then a whole host of generics of Concerta. And then, of course, they can swallow the capsule. You've got Stratera if we need to. So some children, unfortunately, are not good candidates for the methylphenidate group. That's Ritalin and Concerta generally and Focalin in the United States. And then we've got the other group, which are the amphetamines. Adderall, we've got Amphexa in South Africa, and of course we've got Vyvanse. Vyvanse has been a game changer. It is an incredible medication. But the entry dose we've got in South Africa is 30 milligrams, which is a bit high, particularly for children. Yes, you can dilute it, you can titrate it, but it's complicated. The personality impact, we need to adapt its information, coming back for appointments, giving feedback. Not just academic, we don't want that metric to be just academic. We've got to have a child who is whole. Maybe from a teacher's point of view, a teacher might want a child who is very focused, doing what they've got to do with minimal disruption. And yet we've got to have a child at home who's got a personality who's functioning. So we've got to get that holistic feedback. We've got to strike a balance. And sometimes combinations of short acting, long acting. And then I've seen for the last 24 years, sometimes we've got to just try different options. You know, I often find children that are highly emotional, particularly children that are on the spectrum with Asperger's syndrome. They don't always respond as well to medication. They need different approaches. So if you're worried, because who knows your child better than you as a parent? And then as an adolescent, you know, you want to kind of, you don't want to necessarily feel different. Taking a medication, you know, you often think, I don't need that medicine. And yet, maybe the grades show differently. It really is about knowledge. It's about sharing. It's about empowerment. It's also about having autonomy. So the more we talk about it, we can get around those things, making sure that you eat, you exercise, and you sleep. I know it sounds very trite, but that is the hallmark of management. So... If you have any questions, if you've got any personal experiences, I'd love to hear about that. And, you know, this is a dialogue. It's about helping us understand because one medicine might work for you, but not for someone else. You know, in the school park, the school uh, parking lot conversations, you know, my child has done well on this medicine. You've got to use that. I don't like the sound of Ritalin. And this great Vyvanse, it's amazing. Everybody must be on Vyvanse. No, we've got to find out what is right for your child, not someone else's. So I hope that helps you understand and give us some feedback, please.